Hey everybody, welcome back to my coverage of the Pog Champs 3 tournament. This is the first quarterfinals match of the Constellation bracket. Rubius versus Nico, and Rubius is trailing 0-2-1, so he doesn't need to win this game in order to take us to a tiebreaker and avoid elimination. But, you know, this game could really go either way. These competitors are very evenly matched, so if Nico wins, she will advance to the semifinals of the Constellation bracket, and if Rubius uh, wins, we will go to a tiebreaker. So if you missed game one, you can check it up in the info card up there and without further ado let's get right into the game rubius starts with e4 we see d6 from nico the pierce defense we have d4 and g6 knight to f3 bishop g7 so sort of transposing into a modern defense though the modern defense is very related to the pierce defense we have bishop d3 and knight to f6 knight c3 so white taking a very classical defense to white's or to black's pierce defense and both players castle here so both players doing very well so far uh, nice job we have b6 now from Nico looking to get this double fee and ketoed bishop setup and bishop g5 from Rubius continuing to develop. Very good. We have bishop b7 now, fee and shadowing that bishop and rook to e1, getting your rook to the e file, which is likely to open up later into later in the game and also just controlling the center. We have c5, <coughs> c5 from Nico <laughs> uh, and e5 from Rubius. And e5 isn't actually the best move because now you do allow black to win a pawn with this continuation, starting with c takes d4. So this just fails tactically. It looks like it's attacking the knight. Uh, and here, as uh, you might think, you know, how can this be winning a pawn for black? Because after uh, e takes f6 and d takes c3, now there's f takes g7, and I'm going to be up a piece. Well, the thing is, after e takes f6, we're not actually going to uh, capture this knight right away. We're going to play e takes f6 ourselves. And now white has two hanging pieces. They cannot save both of them. So after a continuation like bishop d2 and d takes c3, bishop takes c3 and knight to d7, black will be up a pawn here. So uh, black could have gained the advantage like that, but instead we have knight to d5 from Nico. And this is actually a huge blunder because uh, first you can trade this knight, which removes the defense of the e7 pawn, and then you can open up the e-file, and you'll, you're going to be attacking this e-pawn twice, and you can basically win a pawn and get a very pleasant position here. So, uh, so that would look like knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, and now e takes d6, attacking this e-pawn one, two, three times. And the problem is, even if you take this d-pawn with your queen, well, now white still takes on e7, and it's a fork on the queen and the rook. So... Um, <laughs> You can try to play a move like queen to d7, but simply after d takes e7 and rook to e8, I mean, this is just a very unpleasant position to play as black. You're not even fully developed, and uh, this bishop will be very hard to disconnect from this pawn. Uh, this pass pawn on e7 will be very hard to remove. If you try to play a move like f6, well, now you're weakening your king. And uh, so th this will just be a very, very nice position to play as white. And also, white is going to be up uh, two pawns here. So... Uh, black might regain one of them, but at, at least one pawn and a very pleasant position. Uh, so will we go for that? Uh, well, after knight to d5, white does not play this knight takes d5 continuation. Instead, they uh, Rubius plays e takes d6. And this is a, a fine move too, um, uh, because you, you sort of have similar remove the defender ideas uh, that you can still do. Uh, but here, Nico sort of does white's bidding for them and plays knight takes c3, and now this e-pawn is no longer defended. So after b takes c3 and queen takes d6, now white can go for this fork on e7. So will Rubius go for it? Uh, no, he actually plays bishop to c4, which is very interesting, and this totally allows black to get right back into the game with e6 now, saving the pawn and saving the fork. Uh, and black is, uh, just, black is just back in this game now. Uh, we have even material, white has these doubled pawns, uh, black still needs to develop the knight, but once that happens, uh, we're still going to have a game here. Uh, and here, Rubius plays a move that I didn't like too much, which is g3. And this is just really creating unnecessary weaknesses around your king. You know, there is this bishop on this long diagonal, uh, so your queen is now tied down to your knight, and you're just creating weaknesses around your king that could come back uh, to bite you later in the game. You know, you probably, maybe... There could be an argument for not even wanting or not even uh, wanting to play h3 in this position just because, you know, black still has a dark squared bishop and there's just a ton of pieces left on the board. Uh, much better would have been uh, queen d3 in my opinion, simply developing the queen uh, and connecting the rooks. But we have g3 from Rubius and 
now we have knight c6 from Nico and bishop f4 from Ruiz, uh, sort of just gaining a tempo on this queen and uh, maybe this diagonal will be more active for the bishop. Here, Nico actually doesn't move the queen. She plays knight to e7, so simply hanging the queen. We have seen that Nico is a very fast player. She, she plays moves very quickly and this often leads to blunders. Uh, you can see here that she has 9 minutes and 49 seconds left. Uh, and you, you start with 10 minutes, you only gain 5 seconds for every move. So she is averaging just a tiny bit over 5 seconds per move, uh, which is very fast. So um, th this does lead to blunders, and she did hang her queen here. So Ruiz definitely sees this. He plays bishop takes d6, and here Nico goes for bishop takes f3, which is a trade, and you don't want to be doing trades when you're down in material, but I think this is a good try. Uh, and the idea is now if white takes uh, this hanging knight on e7, then black will take uh, the queen. And we, we could see something like bishop takes f8, uh, rook takes f8, and rook a takes d8. And white is still up a rook here, so it's still totally winning for white. But uh, being down a rook for black is not as bad as being down a queen. So I, I think this was a good try from Nico. Uh, but Rubius does not fall for this trick. He simply plays queen takes f3. And now this is... Um, uh, you, you can't even play a move like rook f to e8 because now this rook is overworked. First you trade and you can't take the back because your rook hangs here. Uh, so here you would have to play a move like uh, rook a to e8, but now you're stuck in this pin and um, it's not. It's just not going to be good. Uh, or you could simply give up the exchange with knight to f5, but you know, really anything you do here is going to be losing as black. You're just down way too much material. Uh, but we have rook f to e8 from Nico, so... Uh, just getting out of that pin and also defending the knight, which is the much more natural move. Uh, and Rubius does go for this overworked piece tactic. Bishop takes e7, and after rook takes e7, will Rubius see the hanging rook in the corner? Yes, he does. He plays queen takes a8 check, and after bishop f8, we have d5, uh, and you cannot take this pawn as black uh, because it hangs the rook, actually. The bishop does not defend the rook because it is pinned to the king. Uh, but... Nico does, or Nico does take this pawn, and this allows Rubius to take this rook. Uh, now Rubius, or Nico takes this bishop on c4, but you're just down way too much material. After rook e8, there's no way to save this bishop. Uh, we have king g7, and rook takes f8, f5, and now rook g8 check, king to f7. Uh, and here you have a very uh, simple mating that you, net that you can create after uh, rook to e1, and uh, the threat is... Um, uh, that threat is obviously queen to f8, so you can stop this and try to escape to g5 with uh, king to f6, or, but then white just plays queen to d8, and you're forced back to f8, f7, and then there's queen to f8, which is checkmate. Uh, so this is just would have been a very fast win, but Rubius uh, goes about it in a very convoluted way, so I'm just going to go through this really quickly. First, we have rook to d1, uh, and now we have king to e7, queen c6, king to f7, Rook c8 and king to g7. Rook d7 check, but the king can escape to h6. We have rook h8 now going after that h pawn and king to g5. Rook h takes h7 and king to g4, <laughs> trying to escape these checks. Uh, this hangs the g pawn though. We have queen takes g6 check and king to f3. Rook d to f7 and king to e2. Queen takes f5, picking up that last kingside pawn and king to d2. Rook takes a7 and king takes c3. Rook a to b7 going after the b pawn now and king to b4. Rook takes b6, capturing that b6 pawn and king to a5. Queen takes c5 check, capturing the c5 pawn and king to a4. Now queen takes c4 check and king to a3. And here you have to make sure not to stalemate. You, there's a ton of stalemates here as the king has absolutely nowhere to go and there are no pawns left. So if the if white played a move uh, like rook b to b7, this would be stalemate. Or if white played a move like f4, this would also be stalemate. So here, you just have to go for any checkmate. There's there's a ton of checkmates in this position. Uh, you know, queen b3 is checkmate. Rook a7 is checkmate. Um, queen a6 is checkmate. So there's a lot of checkmates. And Ru uh, Rubius goes for rook to a7, which is checkmate. So took him a while after he got that winning position, but he eventually made it without stalemating. So uh, Rubies takes game two. We are now tied at 1-1, and um, yeah, we're going to the tiebreaker. So uh, we'll, we'll just have to see who prevails in the tiebreaker. And uh, yeah, pretty good chess from both players, except for that queen hang by Nico. Um, a couple missed tactics in the opening, but uh, 
But overall, pretty good, pretty good. Very principled from these players in this game. And yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say about this game or this match. So uh, check out my Park Champs 3 playlist up there and check out the tiebreaker game from this match over there. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.